Welcome to the Izzy Chinche Show. Being okay with changing your mind. Like you try to do, people will get this place where it's like, oh, I said I was going to do this, I tried this, it's like, and I didn't like it, and that's okay, but at least I know I don't like it. It takes one thing out of the way, and I can like start narrowing it down. I'm so excited you're able to tune in. Join me as I interview athletes, entrepreneurs, and high achievers. I also share much about my life struggles, trials, and successes in hopes to inspire you. I intend for this show to be one of the greatest shows of all time, so your listening and support means the most to me. My goal is to help inspire as many people as possible, so please share with a friend if you enjoy just one thing from today's episode. Together, we can help more people grow. Let's get started. See you now. We're... We're now live, so you know, anything you don't want me to use against you, don't say it, because <laughs> I got it <laughs> oh, boy, Okay. Now. Hey, at least you're honest. At least she's exactly. honest. Exactly. Okay, well, welcome to the show. I'm excited. Thank you. I'm excited to do this. I'm so pumped. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, like, your background? Like, another, you know, you're a Division One athlete. Where did you yeah. wrestle at? It was wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah, where did you wrestle at, like... Give me, give me kind of the lowdown yeah. on that, and then we'll we'll roll. Yeah, yeah. So it was great. I love you said rolling because we're going to talk about jujitsu. So it, it's great. But okay. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my background. I'm from NorCal, um, east of Sacramento, so Shingle Springs. I went to a high school named Ponderosa High School. Really, uh, culture tradition of wrestling. So I was really lucky to have great coaches that took me from being like just an average wrestler like coming into the program and then by the time I left like I was in the semifinals of the state tournament in California I ended up taking fourth uh to my uh future training partner at Cal Poly where I got a scholarship to wrestle at uh Sorab shout out Sorab Movahidi uh but yeah so you know I like I had great coaches went to Ponderosa High School and then it was my dream to wrestle in college and uh, then I got this scholarship and I ended up going to Cal Poly slow, which is division one. Um, and uh, that was, it was an experience for sure. I, I ended up stepping away from the sport after my freshman year because I got burnt out and I was one of 10, 10 guys to step away from it that, that freshman year. So, you know, after that, then I got into jujitsu and uh, you know, really like, that that uh filled that hole that that you know was kind of left from wrestling because that was a huge part of you know how I grew up was just wrestling like during the the winter and now it's kind of coming full circle because you know I've had this long growth since then but now I'm I'm coaching back at the high school uh, back at Pondo and I'm training them in the weight room and yeah so it's it's cool there's there's a there's a lot to it but it's it's been a um, a fun experience. That is so cool. So right after, so you made the decision to step away and then was it like immediate jujitsu? Like, let's go. How did you even know about jujitsu? Because I see wrestlers come in sometimes and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to just go to jujitsu. And then it's like, you don't even, you have no idea what game you're getting into, you know? Yeah. So uh, I got into jujitsu because my buddy Elliot Kelly ran a school here in, in the Sacramento area. And I did a wrestling camp with him when I was going into my senior year. And then we kind of, I didn't, didn't talk to him for like uh, the next year and I went to college and we reconnected when I was working as a lifeguard at the Eldorado Hills Sports Club. And he was there with his family and I was just sitting up on the tower, <laughs> bored out of my mind, like 60 minutes, there's like three people in the pool. And I see him and I'm like, I think that's Elliot. I was like, I, it had been like almost a year and a half, two years. I was like, yeah. hey, like, I, I went to your wrestling camp. Like, what's up? And he's like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Like, you yeah. should come roll. Like, uh, my school is right down the road. And I was like, okay, great. And then I just started going and, and rolling with him. He's like, man, don't even worry about, like, paying for a membership. Just come and train, like, wow. in the evenings. And I was like, whoa, like, all, all right, like, cool. And, of course, when I first started rolling, I was like, you know, classic wrestler, like, just high pace. Like, yep. he, he, would, he would have to, like, tell me, like, Nick, you don't have to go so hard. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't understand. And because, you know, I was just coming from that wrestling background, but uh, it like over the, the course of time and through injuries, I've had to learn how to, you know, not, not be such a wrestler on the mat and to more like flow with it and, and uh, you know, 
have more of that jujitsu style. Yeah. But that's how I got into it. It was through Elliot. And he's okay. now Elliot's crushing it. He's on the, the world team for USA grappling. Like oh, wow. he's just gotten better with age. He's like 39 years old now. Heck yeah. Almost almost 39. I think he's 38. But wow. he's, he's stud. Yeah. I so, love Elliot that. Kelly. But it, it's so true. It comes back to like what is sustainable, especially mm-hmm. when you're in a sport where it it is physical to on on every level you know it's your entire body you're using it and it's like you can't go out and go 100 you can't go 100 four days a week five you can't even I I mean I touched 95 like I had a knee surgery two weeks ago so now I'm out right now but even preparing for a competition I'd hit like 95 percent probably one day a week and the rest I'm chilling about 75 to 85 because that's what's sustainable and otherwise right. injury is going to take over yeah yeah it's so true like you can't go 100 percent all the time and that's like that's why now i use this uh this hrv tracking device called morpheus to help me assess my recovery and i use it in the programs i run nice. um that helps me see like where i'm where i'm at when i wake up i put it on and it assesses my recovery level and then it lets me know, hey, today's a good day to push. You can go hard. Today's not a good day. You should take it easier. I love but I use that. Do you use anything to track, like, your recovery? Um, so when I played, when I played, yes, mm-hmm. um, you had to. You had to wear the, um, I forget, the whatever. I want to say Titan trackers. I think that's what it is. And we had to put that in. You it monitored your heart and, like, everything. I do not. I've also – been dealing with a knee injury for the past nine months. So I haven't been back in it. Um, But I do believe that's something that I'm interested in, in learning more about. And I'll I'll send you the Morpheus link because it's like, it's phenomenal. And like, you know, whoops, like the big one. That is what I use. Yeah, that's what I use. use Okay. I use cool too. It's just the subscription. So you got to pay consistently. Like Morpheus is a one time thing. My team was on Whoop. So we, so that's why I had used that, but I hadn't done. I was so like, once I left my sport, once I left playing soccer, I was like, yo, I am so done and being so closely monitored. I was like, I'm done. I don't want any of that. I need a break. I just got to do my thing. And I got to do jujitsu. It was kind of similar to you. It was like, okay, what's the next thing? What's going to, what's going to fill the gap here? Like I'm a competitive yeah. athlete. Yeah. What, what am I going to do? That's going to keep me feeling like, okay, I'm still in this game. And it was, it was jujitsu. That's it's amazing. That's dope. That's dope. Wait. So what, what did you have done on your knee? Um, this two weeks ago, they just did a little scope. They, I had a, like a one inch piece of cartilage that was in between my femur and my kneecap. And so every time mm. I was trying to do anything, it was just kind of ruining everything. And so we needed to go in and take it out. So I've been doing all my PT and everything. So they're, they're saying like, you're pretty much ahead of schedule. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm going to be doing great and getting back on the mat really soon. I actually have jujitsu mats. We have them in our garage. So as soon yeah. as back, I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's and, what's up. Yeah. I saw you. So you competed. What was that? Oh, last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last weekend. And it, it was fun. I had two matches. It was a smaller tournament. I okay. won both of them. The first one was by submission. The well, second one was, what? What was the sub? Uh, rear naked. Ah, yeah, the best. yeah, the best. yeah. I, yeah <laughs> I got I got the mount, and then uh, he I was I was staying heavy on it, been working a lot on just like controlling the top position, and I was starting to work up, and I was going for an arm bar, and and then he rolled over and turtled it up, and then I was able to put the legs in and then get the rear naked. So okay. it felt good. The second one was the. Um, that was I, I won by two points and that was where I passed his guard or I was passing his guard and I was in side control and he got like a Kimura on me and I was leaving my elbow right there and uh he he kept cranking on it and that was there was like two different times where he almost took my back but then I like hipped out and stayed on top and I won but as he was cranking on my shoulder it like popped a little bit I've had like it's I've had it where it's sublux where it partially come out of the socket. Okay. So I don't know. Have you heard of that? 
No, but I was I was watching that you've been recovering from an, an injury, a shoulder injury. Yeah, That's yeah. Like so, part of your process, I was like, this is a pretty intense comeback process for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's happened several times uh, over the past mm, four or five years. Okay. So it's like it's not as bad as it has been in the past, but like even a, a week after, and I feel so much better. But now I'm I'm using the principles that I've learned from ATG and other coaches I've worked with. To just slowly work like the short range of motion and like bring the stability back to it because that's right. that's really what it's missing. It's not like I don't have mobility in my shoulder. It's like yeah. it got pulled out, yeah, and then it came back in, you know, partially. So now it's I got to remind my shoulder, hey, it's, it's like okay. there's let's get everything around you strong and like reaffirm yeah. that and and build that stability and then then it's, it already feels a lot better. A week, than a week of it. So how did you get into the strength and conditioning? And then now you're running a business coaching people for jujitsu yeah. specific training. That is like, sits yeah. so much. tell me a little bit about that. I'd love to go there. So yeah, in high school, I had a, a mentor and a coach named Jeff Llewellyn who coached me up when I was a senior and he trained me in his garage four days a week. He was like a He's a former Marine, and then he had his NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Certification. Okay. So he was just, like, at that time, it was 2012, and he was, he was, you know, ahead of the game as far as strength and conditioning. Uh -huh. And he put me through this whole program, which is a huge motivation for Matt Strong, my, my business. Yeah. Uh, and he took me from, like, being a state qualifier when I was a junior to, like, you know, middle of the road to then, by the time I was a senior, like, one of the best in the state, like contender to win it, ended up losing in the semifinals. But I always say like, you know, I was, I had my technique, my technical level of wrestling was, was good, but it wasn't like blue chip, like elite, like one of the yeah. best in the nation. It was like, I was, I was good. I had really solid positions where I was confident in and strong, but then I was just in phenomenal shape. I was like yes. one, of the, one of the strongest, one of the most conditioned in the state. And that's, that's why I was successful. That's a huge reason why I was successful is because of strength and conditioning. So then he helped coach me up that year. And then I went into college and I was, you know, studying kinesiology. I was always interested in movement and training. I've always been interested in muscle and wanting to be strong, you yeah. know. Uh, but uh, after, after school, then I was like, all right, what do I do with this degree in kinesiology? Do I become a physical therapist? Do I what else do I do? What are, what are the jobs? And there wasn't really anything said in stone, like coaching at that point, I didn't see anyone who was coaching. I was really living a life that I wanted to live and like being successful with it or no one that I really wanted to like emulate or, or, um, you know, model after. And it was a process of kind of figuring it out on my own and seeing coaches online, seeing coaches like Keegan Smith and then Ben Patrick, the knees of her toes guy was a huge wow. inspiration. Um, so like seeing those guys and then just starting to practice the the techniques and the, these different ways of training that included like flexibility and, and mobility that were huge for helping me get out of low back pain and, and other injuries. So I, I basically started incorporating all of that over the course of like 2018 till 2020 now you know until yeah this last year i've been going online but uh before that i had been in person i got busy and uh now it's been the online progression this last year of building up a clientele so many programs offering you know training services and here we are today amazing no I, yeah i was just looking over your your content is so good your content is so good. It's very, you. you're Thank adding you. so much value. I love that. That's something that I'm, I'm new. I'm just breaking into social media. Like I was yeah. on for a long time. So I'm like, ah, getting back on that. And it's like, you're, you're adding a lot of value with your content. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's like, it's been a whole evolution and it's still like, there's still so much to learn. And, yeah. you know, it's content is uh, interesting because there's, like you could have the best information, you could have like solid material, but if, if you don't have a good hook, you don't have a good, you know, yeah. uh, caption, like no one's going to watch it. And it's all about the presentation. Of it's it so too. true. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm still learning as I go. I've hi- I hired uh, several coaches to help me along the way. Uh, Dylan Fowler is, was the first coach that I worked with last year. He okay. runs a PT training business in Australia. Oh, wow. And I got connected. Yeah. He, I'll send you his info um, if you want, but I got connected with him through Keegan Keegan is uh, the coach I've been, you know, following and um, he's been teaching me a lot over the past couple of years. And he, he runs Uncommon Success, which is a, it's an entrepreneurship group. Yeah. Which you actually might be, in, I don't know if you've heard of that, but you might be I would, interested. I, in I'm it. interested in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll share that with you too. Yeah. Oh, the Uncommon. Yeah. Send and me then, the links too, so I can add them to the show notes. So anyone else can have those too. As they're listening, they can yeah. just go to those links and, and like look up those pages um yeah. but no i love yeah. and so okay so who was like your first client like i want to go into the like because this is also about oh. entrepreneurship so i like I yeah. wanna talk about what was the first client and then putting yourself out there and expanding because now it's like yeah you have a, a very targeted following you have you know it looks like a lot of clients like in your groups like a lot of people following i want to know more about like the the process of building that yeah. Uh, well, the first in-person client or first online in-person. client? Let's do in-person, 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 in-person client. Yeah. In-person client. Shout out Alex Carpenter. That that was my first client, and okay. he's we we trained together for years. He's a, he's a busy guy. I've I haven't actually seen him in a second. I got to reach out to him after this. But we he came into the gym in twenty. This is twenty nineteen. So to give you a little like backstory. Um, 2018 was when I first started coaching. That's when I like graduated and I was like, all right, what do I do with my life? Yeah. Coaching. Okay. I'm going to give it a go, you know? Okay. And there's no, there's no nine to five job. Here's your salary. Here's your, you know, this is what you get. Like, I mean, you could do that. There's a big gym here called lifetime where you could do that, but then yeah, but, yeah. you're a slave to them. And like, you get paid <laughs> like $10 an hour and they take like $70 an hour. And you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. You know? yep. So, so I, I worked for Ultimate Fitness, your I favorite gym, which is a great experience. Um, I had been going to Ultimate Fitness since I was in high school, and I did a wrestling camp with Uriah and those guys, and uh, so I had that connection with them. And then I started training there in 2018, and the gym was brand new in Sacramento, and uh, I now was this new trainer, and I was also working for a physical therapy company called Kime Physical Therapy, and I was interning for them and learning about physical therapy and getting my feet wet. And I didn't have any clients, you know, training. And I was like, I didn't know the first thing about marketing myself or like approaching clients or even like, you know, really like talking about money or like selling myself. Right. Like I had no experience with that. Uh, But six months go by and, you know, I still don't have really any clients, but I was kind of like one foot in, one foot out. Like I was doing physical therapy. I was, I was taking classes for physical therapy and mm-hmm. I was training part-time. And then, so like at my, I was in so many different, you know, directions yep. and, yep. and a- Alex came into the gym and he's like the ideal client. He's like, Hey, um, I haven't worked out in too long. I'm like, mid thirties. I just want to get in shape and, uh, I need help. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, great. Like I can help you, <laughs> you know? And, uh, Perfect. yeah, he signed up and, uh, we started training like a couple times a week and he was really consistent and he's a professor for a liberal arts college, very smart guy. And, you know, like lifting weights just wasn't, he had never really been taught how to do that. So like within a man- manner of like, I don't know, a year to two years, he put on like 20 pounds of muscle, like wow. got, like bulked up and like became more flexible and like, you know, like really made a lot of progress. And he was my first client to sign up. And then after that, then there were a couple more. And then, you know, it that was 2019 and uh 2020 when 2020 came around to be honest i was like at that point i was still i was kind of burnt out with doing all these different things and i was like i i'm gonna check out firefighting like that seems cool that seems like a solid profession like <laughs> like an able- entrepreneur story though you know yeah like, yeah eh, you don't even know what's going on you're just trying to see what sticks yeah <laughs> totally yeah and i so i i checked out but 
but my my motivation for doing that was all right you get a stable job you get benefits you work with you know bros you work with some you know homies and you guys you know you, you help people too like you yeah. you know yeah. you go out in the community it's never the same like it's always it's different it's always evolving that aspect really spoke to me mm. and and then i i you know i what was cool about that is that I started taking action and I was just trying things. I yeah. think that's the most important thing with being an entrepreneur was just trying stuff and throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what works. And being okay with changing your mind. Like you try, yeah. you know, people will get to this place where it's like, oh, I said I was going to do this. I tried this. It's like, and I didn't like it and that's okay. But at least I know I don't like it. It takes one thing out of the way and I can like yeah. start airing it down. Yes. I, yes. I'm right in line with that. Yes. I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I think what makes entrepreneurs successful is like the ability to just try things and be okay with failing, right. Yeah. Learning from it and, and just, yeah. Getting better as you go. Um, yeah. So like during that time I was, I was doing that and I had a, I had a back injury at that, at this time too. Like my last year of college, I had like a big back injury where I was like, I have this drive to come back and, and wrestle again and like be competitive and, you know, really train jujitsu. And then my wrestling partner tried to throw me and I landed funny and like major sciatica for months. And it was this whole process. And then I worked with a trainer. He helped me come back. But then when I came back home, I started lifting heavy again. I started doing the conventional things. I wasn't stretching as much. wasn't really practicing like the, the exercises to keep the foundation healthy. I was just lifting heavy. And, uh, and that was, that was the state I was in when I was trying to coach and I was like first game started. So I had all this back pain and I was like, who the, who the hell am I? You know, like, I felt like an imposter. Like, how am I supposed to be training people to get better and move their body when I got all this back pain? And yeah, it was it was a weird place. It was a weird headspace. I, I like it was a dark time because yeah. you know coming from you know coming from an athlete being an ath- athletic. I mean, you're probably you, to a certain degree you could be going through this right now, like rehabbing from your knee, where you're like yeah. you know you're used to being strong, and then now you're like you have to go through the the injury yeah. process. I feel a little bit with my shoulder, yeah. uh, but the, the back was like another deal. Have you, have you ever had a back injury, like a big back injury? Yes, you- I've had. So it was technically, I think it was technically my, it was technically my ribs, but it was my back. Like it felt like it was my back though. Cause it was my ribs. And that's like, what I, I do deal with lower back pain constantly. That is something that like I have to really? fight. I always had like, it's also my brother and my dad. And typically when we're running a lot, like the lower back just lights up. Like I I literally called the chiropractor this morning. I was like, I got to get in. Like, you know, we got to get some alignment or something. I got, I got some movements to send you. Like if you haven't tried them, if you haven't tried them, like the, and with your knee, you know, it's there, you gotta, you have to take it slow, but there's like the ATG stuff really helped me get out of low back pain. Like, I That's believe- not all I do, but it, yeah, it was I did his knees over toes program, um, actually in the spring and, and I had a ligament, a piece of a chunk of a ligament scar tissue, like in my knee. And that's what I had to have to have surgery. For, so it didn't help me. And so once right. I did that whole program and I was like, man, this is like the top recommended guy. And I'm not someone who like does the program and is like, Oh, I'm doing it. No, like I do that religiously every yeah. single day do all the things i was like i have had zero improvement that's when we're like all right we got to go back in it was just yeah long yeah. process so frustrating and yeah. so yeah. It, it is it's such a frustrating process and i love that you even brought that up because this morning i was ser- i was talking to my friend i was like i'm in crutches right now and like like i got my crutches like right here and i was like even even setting up for my podcast and everything i was like man this is so frustrating like i yeah. I'm in crutches right now. Yeah. Like, it means, like it, it's tough. It's tough, it's tough. but it's, it's tough. It's part of the, I think it's part of the journey. It's like, yeah. you're going to be so aware that you're not going to be someone who's going to pick up things along the way. And, and some athletes have a lot more injuries than others. You know, I think yeah. I, I was one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I am too. Yeah. It's, you know, it's uh, it's definitely part of the process, but it's good that you got that taken care of. I bet if, you know, after, like if you were to go back to doing some of the ATG movements, yep. 
I'm sure. I think it'll probably work now if you don't I have that, that as well. Yeah. I believe, and it's funny because I'm still doing some of the things because I noticed in, in none of my, um, in all of my rehab process, they have nothing to strengthen, um, like tib, tib raises, no kind of tib raises in yeah. any of my knee, um, rehabs, which I thought was kind of interesting. Cause that's one of his main things. Yeah. And I figured out how to like do it just by sitting and literally just bringing my toes up if you do enough reps like i'll do like a hundred in a row i'm like okay i'm burning now I'm like oh, yeah I can, I can get it but i've already started to do some of his things because I, there's a reason he has a following and like i mean even his story is a, a testament to to the stuff that he's teaching it's yeah it 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 works in like in most cases unless you have like something specific like exactly. you know like your situation exactly. right yeah, yeah. so yeah, it'll be it'll be cool for you to come back around and like you know really get after it. I think it'll it's, it'll help a lot with your low back pain. So I've seen it help myself. I've seen it help clients. Like yeah. just opening up the hip flexors, opening up the groin. Yeah. Uh, opening up the QL, the side yeah. body. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we were talking about uh, low back pain and um, and that. And, oh, so like coming back to the low back pain yeah. you know, like I got I got uh I, I started I was dealing with that when I was coaching and I was like the tough part and uh and then it was it was a matter of just you know really trying things and like seeing seeing that you know uh what really spoke to me and like I did this whole fire academy and I yeah. was really gung-ho about it but then throughout the academy I was still working as a trainer and by the end of the academy I was like my heart was just in training and I knew I needed to pursue that so I like I just had this gut feeling like I need to go do that so so I I did and that was two years ago actually that fire academy is three years ago and since 2021 though I've been working as a coach full-time and I love that yeah first year and a half was um mainly in person and yeah. doing a little bit of virtual, but mainly in person. Mm-hmm. And that was, it was a great experience, but it was just so much time in the gym. And I was like doing seven to 10 hour days in the gym, Monday through Friday. And it was just draining. It was yeah. so draining. Like, even though I love it, you know, it, it was just, it was not sustainable as far as a model. So then yeah. last year I started the, the online and the hybrid stuff and the the programs and I started just offering my services to people that couldn't fit in the schedule and started programming for them and that kind of just slowly got got better and better and took off and uh this last year I've been growing at and then now I'm coming to this point where I'm like okay I love the the online the hybrid that's great but I need some in person I like having that in person so yeah. now I'm trying to to have more in person and we're working on uh growing a seniors class here in Sacramento. Yes. So, I want to hear yeah. about this. Yeah. I, so, about, I, we, I think we need more of this. I literally this podcast I was listening with Ed Milet earlier today, they were talking yeah. about he w- they were basically making fun of people who <laughs> who and, and I get it because I I call it exercise too like you know especially it depends where you're at like for me and my crutches walking is definitely exercise because it's a workout yeah. but just like where's our standard done that now walking is exercise mm-hmm. he's like we have lowered our standard too much and I was like I like that you know I was like I think people need to know how important that resistance training is and that's something that like sometimes I'll forget about I'll be like ah no I'm like still doing it say no building those muscles to protect your body and especially making it available to seniors like they don't know and then they don't have resources and then yeah so I I love that so tell me a little bit where did that idea come from and then what's kind of the the process yeah yeah Uh so I, the, the idea has been there for, for months, like, you know, like since the beginning of the year, I've, you know, like in Sacramento, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in the, the age range of like 60 plus. And I've always thought like, it would be really cool to help seniors strength train and, and teach them about strength training. 
And, but I've been focusing on training grapplers and I've been focusing on really growing that and marketing that. Yeah. And, um, so they kind of, it was kind of always on the back burner, but it was just like this thing that kept coming to the front of my mind Mm -hmm. from just seeing it and just realizing like, Mm -hmm. this is the, the number one growing population in America. Like more people are in this population. They're like more people are retiring. Like it's a great population to work with. They have the availability as far as time, uh, financially they're, you know, they can afford it compared with a lot of other people and just, it's so helpful. Like it's, it's going to impact their life so much by preventing for women, osteopenia, and then for men and women, sarcopenia, osteopenia, for those of uh, you guys that don't know, uh, is the loss of bone uh, density over time. The bones yeah, become I, yeah. more brittle, right? And then sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass over time. And both of these things are very preventable through resistance training. And I think a lot of people in general are very scared about resistance training because they, they've had bad experiences and they don't want to lift heavy or they don't want to lift extra weight. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of fear behind it. So then they completely avoid it. And, you know, they'll, they'll do some things if, you know, if, if they're on it, if they, if they're, you know, more exercise inclined, uh, they'll do like water aerobics or you know, yeah. walking, walking, which is great. Like keep doing that. But the yeah. resistance training, you can't match it. Like there's nothing like it, especially for fall prevention and uh, mobility yeah. and like that fall prevent. I mean, when when seniors, if they fall, like the likelihood, uh, if they break a hip, like the likelihood of them making it from that is very, very low. I don't know the exact statistics on it, but yeah. I remember in college we, we learned about this. Like it's it's kind of crazy. You wouldn't think about it, but if you if a senior breaks their hip, like the surgery from that is they just, they usually, they can't recover. Oh yeah. 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 No. So, so taking all of that into consideration that like I was talking with my business partners at Capital Jiu Jitsu where I work and they were thinking about doing a seniors class and they were actually going to bring in uh, some, some other people to teach it. And I was like, Hey guys, like I'm, I'm interested in doing this. Like we should yeah. do this. We're like, great. Like let's do it. Yeah. And so we just created this flyer and we're starting to to market it, but it's going to be okay. Mondays and Wednesdays at nine in Sacramento here. And it's going to be a drop in fee. So uh, first class is free, but you know, after that, then uh, seniors will be able to purchase like a bundle and nice. the bundle, it'll be uh, eight sessions for $30 per session. So it comes out to two forty, mm-hmm. or uh, 12 sessions or just under 30, 27 and a half, uh, right. or three thirty. So it's, you know, very like compared with personal training, which is like $120 yeah. an hour, yeah. it's very affordable. And, you know, it's going to be a semi-private group environment. Yeah. So like, it'll be fun. And, uh, I'm super pumped about it. I've been teaching a mat strong class, which is like strength training for the mat yeah. on, you know, on a couple weeknights, uh, out of the week. And I've had, uh, a couple, in their 70s, Michael and Denise, who have been coming to my class since the beginning of the year. <laughs> Denise, she's got double knee replacement. Michael's had uh, knee replacement. He's had a low back problems. And they both rave. They're like, Nick, my, my, Michael's like, my back pain's gone. Like, I feel so much better. Like, he's in Muay Thai class, kicking ass now. That's Denise, awesome. Yeah, Denise, like, she could barely bend her knee when she first started. Yeah. And now she's like, halfway down into a split squat like crushing it she's i've got her on i put him through i put everyone through all these different like mobility exercises and dynamic movements that i've learned over the years that that open up the body and a lot of them oh sorry no i just i we talk about because at a lot of the jujitsu places you go to train me and my fiance my best friend who we're all we're all in it we talk about like the we have these really stupid warmups, you know. We yeah. talk about like it's just like the very classic. Like there's just you do a couple, you know, somersaults, backwards, forwards. You do it, but if we, you know, if you're like actually working on your back bend and you're working on yeah. stuff like that, because I've seen the stuff that you post, I'm like that's yeah. awesome. Those yeah. Like that's a warm up that I would enjoy, you know, not mm-hmm. these other warm ups where it's like, okay, we're we're shrimping across the floor, like you know? yeah. 
yeah. I know. I like, can we make it a little bit more, you know, exciting, exciting and then also yeah. like just like valuable as far as mobility training but again these like boring yeah. warm-ups are like come on i'm like uh, i want to show up 50 yeah. so i don't have to waste my time doing yeah it. right that's why everyone shows up <laughs> late like you get the brown belts the black belts show up after but it's yeah i think a lot of times a lot of people feel that way. i feel like that that way sometimes our our coaches here they do a pretty good job like keeping it lively keeping it yeah. exciting they'll mix it up too but yeah it's I think in the warm up, it's like key to have all, movement variability, and then challenge people with their mobility because, like yeah. both you and I, we're we're sitting flexed, right? We're yeah, yeah. We're not practicing. We're in flexion. We're not in extension. We got to practice extension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, I'm like, okay, all right, let's sit up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now gyms though are like, I know the one that two gyms right now they cut their warm ups like. Some of the class, they don't even have warm-ups because you go into drilling anyways, and that's where yeah. you're going to drill for at least 30 minutes before you're going to roll anyways. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah. oh. it's, it's it's controversy, but for me, I'm like, I'll do my warm-up on my own if I want to actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think the mobility warm-ups are key, especially for a lot yeah. of grapplers because they, they're not going to really stretch if, unless they're forced to. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of like gymnastics too. And, yeah, and like awesome. those, those movements and like controlling your own body weight before you control someone else's. Yeah. That all the hanging variations, like front yeah. levers, inverted hangs, like planches, like that, those are things that I'm learning right now. And especially for my shoulder, I'm really excited about for helping with that too. Once um, I come back, I'll have to go through one of your, one of your programs, one of your Matt Strong. Yeah. Programs. For, for yeah. real, like I, I was thinking yeah. about that too. You know, as you're like, as you're rehabbing from this, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to, to offer that. Izzy. Heck yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll totally, I'll totally do that. And um, so I don't know if you saw, but I, I posted it on, only on my reels. My best friend, she competed this weekend. Did oh you, shit! Did you go? Did you? See know, it. Oh, you gotta see it. You gotta see it. So she, <laughs> it's it's pinned to my reels. It's like uh. I, I just made a little like savage video of what she was doing. She, she subbed this girl. I said it was 20 seconds in the comment, um, but she literally subbed this girl, walked on the mat. This was for the final. It was her third match. And she subbed this girl and under, it was well under 15 seconds with a standing guillotine. Oh, and, shit. and you see when she does it, she's doing this and she, you see this girl's toes come up off the ground. And she's oh, that's you know. Yeah, yeah, and you're just like you're looking at it like let's go, and we didn't even know when it got called. We're like, what's what's going on? Are they recentering? Are they going back to the mat? And it was like, no, uh, one. Did you see it? This this first one uh, when you're uh, oh, it's, 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 it's like yeah, it's if is you it go the first one? It, yeah, it should be. It's eleven k. Has like a yeah. When you're tired of competing against white belts. And this, she just walks away like such a savage. Oh, my God. <laughs> so she hopped gyms. Oh, so she, damn. Isn't that so great? <laughs> she choked out this, this like, teenage guy. No. Teenage boy. Okay, no, that's actually a girl, and she's 29. But that's oh, okay. Right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the haircut is short. You're good. <laughs> I was going to say. She is her own. <laughs> we can edit that out. <laughs> yeah you're like <laughs> take that out <laughs> oh wow isn't that crazy though it was so nice it, we were we were screaming she literally picked wow. that ground yeah that ass. yeah um but she hopped a couple gyms just because like our gym that we all trained at, at it was a ufc gym they actually it fell apart which is super sad so yeah. she like get promoted and then she finally found a new gym that she was going at and she's just, she's very skilled. Like she's, we yeah. would drill for hours. She's really strong, but because you change gyms, you're not going to get promoted. And yeah. so we, I was joking. I was like, I'm making a video and posting it about like you competing against white belts. Cause each, any, or she's gone into two tournaments and she's won them both. Like, yeah. And gone against like four people. <laughs> and like, so then, she needs to get so, promoted. She needs to get promoted. So that's why I was yeah. like, and her coach saw that video and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's good engagement too 11k like I know. that's really I was, good I was like, that's the video but i i was like 
it was funny because people were responding to it. And I was like, I knew I was doing good when I was getting some like hate comments, you know, I was yeah. like, I got some naysayers. They're like, well, why don't you did it? I was like, that's, I was yeah. like, I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's how you know, huh? You know, you're act, you've actually created something that's like viral or whatever. Once you get a little hate, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Like, we have some yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. yeah. I funny. thought you'd appreciate that since. Uh, I did. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Needs to get promoted hundred percent. She, it's coming it's coming yeah. what belt are you i think you told me you i'm a blue belt right now oh, belt. yeah so i like within the next year i i want to get my purple yeah I, think I took a long time uh earlier this year like i i had a wrist injury from last year i this is another one of the things i like tore the ligaments and tore several ligaments in my wrist trying to go for a darts choke yeah. yeah so my goal when i compete next is to not get injured and to to dominate you know because yeah. I, it seems like every time the, the last couple of times i had some like bumps and bruises but this yeah. one was a big one uh, with the the wrist but it's gotten a lot better um since then so yeah. it, it's it's but it, it was tough it was definitely tough there was yeah. like i could i could not really use my hand too much like now i can grip i can hang on it i can do push-ups i can do a handstand nice but okay for the first couple months of the year, it was like really tender. I couldn't roll. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't uh, really use it that much. So I'm thankful to just have it, you yeah. know, have the function of it. It was yeah. like just a, just a freak thing. Like uh, I had a darts choke and I was trying to, to yeah. get the darts choke yeah. and I just, I popped the wrist. Uh, I popped yeah. I popped my own wrist. Oof. So, yeah. 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 So are you primarily gi or no gi? I like no gi, okay. but I'll still train in the gi. Yeah, I feel like you kind of you kind of have to. But my first six months of training were no gi. I didn't even. I was oh, like, really? oh, yeah, I didn't even touch a gi. And then I, I actually feel that made me so much better because I feel like it's easier. Gi is easier to get pretty much any submission. It's easier. Yeah, yeah. You, know? it's, it's, you have the grips. Yeah, you got a lot. You got a lot more going on. But I saw that you competed in no gi, so I was like, mm -hmm. I'm still competing in no gi. <laughs> yeah. You know, the wrestling background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like it. I like it more, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So what are some of your, so, so, some of your, I let's say like, let's go like top three tips for, for someone who is in jujitsu. Cause you know, I know a lot of jujitsu people, so there's going to be some jujitsu people listening to this, you know, type of thing. What are some yeah. of your tips for avoiding injury and just getting strong i think uh for avoiding injury number one just don't try to force things on the mat like you know try to flow with it um just yeah i think if you if you try to stiffen up or you really try to force something that's where injuries usually happen yeah um, so that's probably number one and then number two for for strengthening yourself i think just Focusing on the conventional movements, the, you know, squats, hinges, pushing, pulling, and then body weight exercises are, are really great um, to add to, you know, for the core strength. You, sh you should be able to hold your, your body in like a plank, in a side plank. You should, uh, you know, for a minute, you feel mm -hmm. strong, not feel your low back giving out. You should be able to hang for a minute from a bar at least. Um, yeah. I got a question on that. When I hang from the bar, uh, and I would say I have pretty good grip strength, so I can hang there for a while. My lower back lights up when I hang from the bar. Yeah, it's because you just you used, your your back is just is is you getting the traction. So yeah. right, right now you probably have just some tension built up in your low back. Yeah, and Oops. that's probably from <laughs> well, your butt came out. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have you tried like Jefferson curls for your back? I do not know what that is. Okay. So that's where you, you're standing and then you tuck your head, you tuck your chin, you round your upper back then your mid back okay. and your low back okay. and come up in reverse. So it's, it's segmental flexion where you're, you're practicing tucking the chin and then diving down. So okay. it, it, it works on lengthening out the whole, the whole back. Okay. Yeah. I'll that, that would, that would probably be good. I'll send you a video on that. Yeah. Uh, amazing but if you're if your back is hurting when you're hanging that just means that there's some tension built up in the yeah. low back and 
by opening up the the hip flexors, the groin, and doing movements like the Jefferson curl, it'll help alleviate the tension so you're not feeling it. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. is good. Now, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting good advice for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need this. Uh, it's good. It's, I'm sure there's other people who are feeling the same thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I'm like, and then I don't hang because it hurts. I'm like, I probably should be hanging so I can work yeah. on that. Like, this is so uncomfortable. I don't know if this is yeah. good for me. I'm like, this this kind of pain just hanging. It's supposed to be relief, but it's not. Yeah. So, okay. you, you know what? For, for uh, injury prevention, like all the, what I've said so far is great. Like definitely strain training, you know, work on squatting, work on hinging, work on pushing, work on pulling. But, you know, it, as far as like best bang for your buck, if you're going to start anywhere, it's stretch. Like work on stretching, work on mobility, work on the couch stretch because that's going to open up the hip flexors, the pancake stretch that'll open up the groin, and then the pigeon stretch will open up the outer part of the hip. Just those are like the big three that I recommend for everyone. Yeah. Like if you're tight in, your low back's going to be bothered. And yeah. until you open up your hips, then the low back's going to it's going to be irritated. Yeah. I feel like so, my hips are, I, and I think especially for soccer players, because I work with a lot of soccer players and yeah. I have soccer players who listen to the show, like the hips are so tight constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's just from kicking the ball and, you know, run doing all those dy dynamic field movements. And I think largely kicking and yeah. The are so tired of like we do a couple hip stretches but it's got to be more i'm like it's got to be more you got to do a, whatever you think you're doing is enough stretching it's like it, probably like 10x <laughs> to, to yeah for, for some yeah. people yeah you know to start i think like doing some static stretches at the end of the day for like 10 minutes yeah you know if you, if you do so trying to hold the static stretch for 60 seconds to begin and then building up to 90 seconds is yeah. like the gold standard 90 seconds yeah. To actually get the, the tissue to open up and, and yeah. to uh, work past the stretch reflex. Yeah. Uh, but it, I think a lot of the time people, uh, you know, think stretching is bad or that it's it's not actually really maybe not not so important. But yeah. I mean, stretching is strength training. Stretching is using certain muscles to stretch the opposite muscle. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's in a sense strength training. So I think for all different kinds of people everyone we should all stress because our body's going to get tight in certain ways we're we're sitting in a flex position for a certain amount of hours out of the day i agree if you're not if you're not strength training um or stretching you know yeah. then you're gonna hurt yeah 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 i love hurt. it and, and yeah when you're training hard you're gonna hurt anyways but if you're not doing anything you're also gonna hurt but one is actually moving you <laughs> yeah the, I also the saw balance. that you, you talk a little bit about nutrition on your page. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you see people are missing and they, that like someone, it would just be good for someone to be reminded of. Like maybe they already know what there's like a lot of us yeah. know what we're supposed to be doing when we are, you know, an athlete or whatever. And those are a lot of the listeners, but it's still good to be reminded. Right. And yeah. so yeah. it's like you got to remind yourself you got to remind someone someone else maybe it's me like what yeah. are some of those things i'd love to hear that yeah nutrition is you know very controversial there's so many different camps for it but i think it's like a global thing you know i i try to follow the 80 20 rule like 80 percent of the time eat unprocessed foods 20 percent of the time on the weekend like treat yourself you know like go and enjoy it it's okay to have you know if you want to have a cookie over the weekend like don't kill yeah. yourself or having the cookie but eat majority of your food unprocessed yeah. and then within that you know it's there's different camps but i think that uh eating uh, a balanced diet is key so prioritizing protein is mm -hmm. what i always encourage people to yeah. do because most people don't get enough protein some people will say otherwise but if you look at it by and large most people are not getting in enough protein yep and the people who tell you otherwise are usually they're not getting enough protein. Yeah, you can see it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it in their in their body. Yes. And <laughs> um, yeah, so it's protein in the morning. If you have protein in the morning, it's gonna help satiate you moving forward. You, I mean, protein, like the the root of protein is um, the Greek. It it means first. 
So mm. it's like start with protein. That's the building blocks for everything. Like the I building love that. Can you say that again? Can you say that? Yeah, oh, I love it's that. The, the, the root of the word means primary or first. Yes. Greek. Yeah. Uh, I, for, I forget the, the actual uh, the, the no, name, but, but yeah. It's, yeah, it means first. So it's like, if you're going to have, if you're going to yeah. start with anything, start with protein. I think most people are eating way too many carbs mm. uh, throughout the day and that's spiking their blood sugar and spiking, you know, the body has to take out insulin to, to bring that, that, that sugar uh, back into the cell. And that, that, you know, you see that throughout the day and that's, diabetes is a huge problem in america and what are what are most people eating on a standard american diet carbohydrates right yeah processed foods which are have a lot of carbohydrates now i'm not trying to demonize carbohydrates it's just yeah you know don't eat so much of carbohydrates unless you're training intensively if you're training intensively have have carbs before and after the session but yeah i think for like as a general rule of thumb what I encourage people to do is have protein every couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Generally, it's around 30 grams, give or take the size of the individual yeah. and their um, their activity level. But having that protein space throughout the day gives the body a chance to turn on muscle protein synthesis, which helps create new muscle. It's like turning on a light switch. It's sending yeah. a signal to your body like, hey, here's here's some building blocks. Let's use them. Yeah have it and i think when it comes to training definitely have if you train intensively within 90 minutes after your training session try to have close to 30 grams of protein and then some carbohydrates two to three times yeah. that amount like have a meal within 90 minutes of an intense training session so yeah. then your body it'll help you recover yeah no i love that and i love that you're saying that that 30 grams because that's i realize i i I think you can fall off it. Like, you know, you're doing really good with your diet and then maybe sometimes it, it, it slips a little. And I, yeah. I realized today, I was like, man, I really do not think I'm getting enough protein. I was like, all right, breakfast. I had at least 35 grams of protein in my breakfast. I was like, I know that I'm yeah. like, okay, lunch, let's, let's hit another 30. And I love that you're that 30 for me is a really good mark. I'm like, if I hit the 30 for like three meals a day, I feel like I'm doing good. I'm, I'm not going to stress on it. I'm like, all right, I got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, something that for, and it varies on like, you know, wow. how much you weigh, the size, like, right, like a 250 pound, you know, linebacker is going to need more protein than a 125 pound female, right? Like, yeah. they're going to need different amounts of protein. But from what I've, I've seen, it's about 30 grams, give or take, you know, if you're yeah. smaller, maybe it's a little under, if you're bigger, yeah. maybe it's some more. Yeah. Um, but 30 is like the, the good number. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, as, as far as like nutrition, I think that's, that's key. Uh, and especially for grapplers, like having some fuel in you before you go and roll mm-hmm. is really key. Like having, I think a great pre-roll snack is uh, like some, some fruit and maybe like half a scoop of protein powder, um, like an hour before, like I feel great off of that. Or you could have some, you know, a rice cake with, you know, if you want to have some, like put some, peanut butter or almond butter on there like yeah, you know. okay so i'm like I, i'm already like we need to do another podcast and go over all yeah. of this stuff i want i want to hear about it because I, I know we're about an hour so yeah. I don't want to go too far over oh yeah the whole other thing i want to talk about preparing for competition and stuff like that and yeah i, I would love to talk about that this has been amazing thank you so much yeah, thank you yeah this has definitely been a blast I, i'd love to do it again yeah um, I, there's yeah i wrote down some notes i'll send you uh, a couple of the different uh, things that, that we talked about that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so grateful for your support. I'm already excited for the next show. Turn on notifications and be on the lookout for my next episode. Also, please share the show with anyone you feel like might benefit from listening to. Thank you for all your love and support. I will see you soon.